Hello everyone, my name is Nino and today I am going to talk about my success story. Uh, we have different um, co-topics here, so I'm just going to follow the question and then answer with my experience. I'm going to talk about my project, the negatives and positives about it and um, things I've done here and um, things I've learned. And I hope that this um, success story video will be hopefully like, I don't know, helpful for people out there who are thinking of becoming volunteers or it will help other members of the organizations to reflect upon it and change something to make their workplace better place to work or um, help volunteers to um, think about their own um, experiences and reflect upon it. So let's just get through it. Um, the very first thing about uh, in the success story is that um, I should talk about my experience here. And uh, I've decided to divide this my, my experience, my stay in Poland into two parts. The first part is um, before quarantine and before coronavirus and the second one is after corona. I'm dividing in, in such manner because I believe that um, everything has changed since the quarantine started and my teaching methodology has changed and the way I interact with people has changed. So um, it has been so different those post and uh, after coronavirus periods for me, they've been so different that I've decided to cut it in half. Um, so before Corona, what I was doing first, I met my um, organization and then the school receiving organization, supporting organization. And um, we started to come up with some kind of system like where they could put us uh, volunteers in their work. Um, basically, the first part was that we had to learn about what they were doing, the pupils, what they've learned so far, and then how would we as volunteers be able to contribute um, to this um, teaching process. Um, um, for that, I have created some little projects, so there have been topics that I was really interested in. And um, I'm going to work on those topics um, in on those directions um, after the project uh, has ended, um, after the project ends, I think. Um, so um, I started with the discrimination topic, which was the most successful in my case, because it was a huge uh, four to five weeks long project. And I've... Um, done this project with almost 11 groups, 11 or 12, I'm not sure about the numbers. Um, and it was quite successful because initially the pupils were not really engaged, but at the end I've observed, I have my personal observations and uh, feedback from them that um, they really opened up, they were willing to share um, their experiences or their really intimate details about their life or um, they were just willing to contribute something to the project itself, so I was pretty happy about it. Um, the other projects were about slavery, modern day slavery, and it was like um, before you get a job, what you have to know, what you should not do, like signing an agreements with, in the language that you don't understand, and etc. And um, I tried to make them understand that um, slavery is not some kind of, I don't know, past. It still happens nowadays and um, we should be extremely aware of that. And I think that was also successful, even though initially, again, they were like very passive. They were like not really used to such presentations or such um, activities, non-formal non education. Um, they were mostly used to reading the textbook. The, like then finishing some exercises that the teacher had given to them and then just go home. So they were quite surprised with all those activities and the creative team building whatsoever. And um, I think that I've learned a lot um, in this post quarantine period. And uh, we were doing uh, with my uh, volunteer, co-volunteer, I guess at school, Jean from France, um, lots of tests, tests um, and trials and then we would lose somewhere, we would win somewhere. We were trying different techniques, different tools for them and we would observe which one worked, which one did not work. 
And it took quite a lot of time, to be honest, um, because um, the school was not really prepared to receive us uh, in terms of like the teachers didn't know where to put us or how to give us time or whatsoever. And uh, we had to work it on our own. Um, and it's not a bad thing because we developed our independence skills and we started um, planning things ourselves. So I guess it was not bad, bad after all, but um, um, apart from that, um, yeah, everything was going great. There were some projects or um, different um, team building activities or different topics, presentations after, um, after that uh, school, but I will talk about them later. Um, so for now, I will go to the post-quarantine um, experiences because for me it, it took longer like it, it's been quite a long time it was it, it was since February so basically more time from my volunteer ring project uh, was in, in during the quarantine and initially I was pretty confused I tried to have classes with them but um, the school also was in the process of changing their own schedules and the uh, platforms that they were going to conduct all those classes and um, therefore like they didn't have much time for us so we should have figured it out ourselves so I've decided to maybe record some videos for them the very first video as I remember was the Georgian language crash course and um, I just recorded this and uploaded it later on, on our social media on the school platforms and um, I received some good comments from the pupils and I'm really thankful for, for that to all of you guys. And um, after that I was just recording videos because I understood that um, this was for this moment because we were in quarantine, we didn't have the ability to go to school or to see pupils face to face so I decided that this was the best uh, option for me to record videos like educational videos and give it to them. Um, Apart from this Georgian language crash course, I've been talking about Universal Declaration of Human Rights and I've learned a lot also, even though I've been, I, I knew about it before, but I went in depth and I learned more myself and it was really a pleasure for me to share this acquired knowledge to the pupils. And it's going to be always there on those social media platforms, so I really hope that someone at some point will reuse this material again. Um, I was really sad because I could not really be physically with them and make those activities, toolbox um, that I have like written down, researched before. And um, usually for the, those pupils, um, this part was funnier. They were getting more and more engaged. And it was kind of breaking this barrier of... Um, um, like them not like being passive like it was breaking down this wall and they were like more engaged so I kind of missed this um, and those online platforms and videos making process um, but still it was I guess good that uh, we kept um, our health in a good condition and we didn't risk um, risk it um, overall I think it was quite nice um, especially when it comes to the school. Um, um, now we are going to move to the activities at school. But I think I already talked about um, the activities and the project that I've implemented there. So I think I'll just go ahead and talk about my personal experiences. Um, initially, when I started off, it went great, in my opinion, even though there were so many trial and error modes, um, sometimes it was even tiring and I didn't even have the motivation to come up with a new idea that I would try and um, this create an, another system to work uh, with, the, with the school uh, or to cooperate with the organization. But um, later everything uh, went according to plan and I was, um, you know, all right. Like I knew what should I do and I knew in, in which terms I should um, contribute these things. But Later, after quarantine again, um, I started having struggles because I had to sit in front of this computer all the time. I did not really have contacts with humans 
and um, usually I'm a very social person. I love to be socially engaged and I love to meet with people. And um, I think that the day is sometimes lost if I don't meet with people and just talk with them. Um, so this quarantine hit me very hard and I was really not able to function as productively as before. And that also hit me very hard because I have very high demands of myself and therefore um, I took it very hard that I was not able to do everything as before and I could not be as productive as before. And um, it was really hard for me to accept those limitations that Corona virus and this quarantine and the lockdown um, had. So um, basically I felt really, really bad in those um, weeks and it was really hard for me to be motivated and um, it seemed as if the, it was like the end, at the end of the world and I didn't have the motivation to do anything or to find funny activities because I was struggling a lot. Um, apart from that, I, I had to go through two surgeries and uh, I got a very hard virus also during those corona times, so I was pretty panicky and I had to go to the hospital like three times, I guess. Second, and um, <clears throat> two of them ended with the surgery. The first surgery that I got was um, the wisdom tooth removal because it got like really big and infected, and the second time it was my appendix a removal, and that was painful. And I had to spend uh, almost a week at hospital, and the rehabilitation process took me about from two to three months, and also during this. Um, operations and post operations I was feeling very low because physically especially after this appendix removal operation I was not able to physically stand on my feet I was lying all the time I I had severe pain after the operation and the healing process um, took so long that I I was not expecting it to be that long and it was um, it hit me hard also and during this, I was not really um, productive, I would say, um, because I was physically not able to do anything. I'm not even talking about sitting in front of laptop because I was not even able to get out from my bed or could cook food for myself. Um, and I was very worried because I didn't have my family here. And usually family is the... It's like an institute that takes care of you whenever you have such um, bad phases in your life and the friends and um, thanks to my friends um, during my stay here and to my lovely neighbors I wasn't feeling lonely even though my family wasn't here um, but still like this period I think it was pretty hard for me and when I think about the whole um, my health issues during the, my stay in Poland, it was quite a lot and um, I think that they, they influenced me and my working and my productivity a lot um, and basically that was it about my personal experiences. Apart from that I got lots of um, friends and acquaintances, especially from the school and they were teaching me how to swear in Polish or what phrases to use and etc. And it was pretty cool. Um, also, I got a um, really good community um, in the building. So it was me and two other families. And we would get along during this quarantine, this lockdown. We would go and watch some movies, some Polish movies or listen to some concerts, orchestras and um, talking to them and changing these experiences and um, um, I don't know just like sharing your cultural values it was most the most important um, part in this whole volunteering process because in those lockdown um, months I've learned more from them than during my whole stay in, in, in Poland and um, I was pretty excited about it and I even nowadays we have this intercultural exchange so to say um, and yeah I think I'm, I'm learning 
more about Poland, Polish people, their behavior from them. And it was really not really that possible only while communicating with the volunteers, even though having this connection with them helps you to understand some tiny, tiny details about their culture. But it was not as deep as me knowing more about Poland and Polish culture as well. I was having this long term connections with them and I was somehow living with them. Um, so I'm really grateful to them also. If not them, I think um, I would feel even worse about my project. But thanks to them, it was light, lightened up and um, I got more knowledge and I didn't feel as if I was unproductive, but it was the opposite. I've learned so much that I'm very thankful to them. And um, all the Polish phrases that I know, I think I need, I have to thank to them yeah, for that. So it was pretty nice. Um, apart from those, my personal um, experiences, the, the other one is success, what I have achieved. And even though I had some preconditions for my successes that I'm um, going through right now, I still would say that um, the schools, the activities that I've conducted with helped me to um, know more about the way I would like to conduct classes or the way I'm more comfortable with and the way I I can wake them up in a way and make the pupils or students concentrated more. Um, it helped me quite a lot and so far I am a um, teacher at one institute and the university and that can be um, said that it's my like success story because I started from teaching at school and ended up in full-time employment at those institutes in or universities so I'm I think I've learned quite a lot from there and um, yeah, I will be pretty thankful to that, that um, this whole project like challenged me to have the skill and I had to like sit down and like learn more about it and like go in depth. So I think it worked. Um, apart from that, the last part is the changes, any kind of change and um, I don't know, I think I've become more... Um, understanding uh, of my own wishes and um, before I was pretty open-minded and I think overly open-minded it's like when you try to adapt to like everything and when something is disturbing you I don't know for example different cultural differences and before I was like okay I will try to work on myself and accept this difference as much as possible but I've learned that um, you should not always force yourself to change for someone and this someone, if they're not trying to change for you too and like um, cooperate especially, like you don't have to force yourself because I got myself traumatized because I was challenging myself on different aspects and um, I think it was not good for me because you should never do that. You should never try to adapt to someone. So I guess when we're talking about changes, I think that has changed in me. I am still a very open-minded person, but I now know my limits. So um, I know what I get pleasure from. I know what makes me happy, what makes me sad or angry. So I think I learned about myself like more during this project. And I think this project was really... Um, interesting and productive especially on this side um, because you just know yourself more and you know your you as a person and you see a different aspects of your life in from a different perspective so um, I think I grew up as a person during this project even though um, and not only from the positive side, but from 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 negative side. So now I see what disturbs me um, the more, and um, I try to solve it, uh, to look at it as a problem and just to solve it. So I'm not trying to just adapt to the problem itself, but just to come up with the idea that would help me to um, be with such person that I don't share values with or. Um, etc. So overall it was quite interesting for me this whole project and apart from me making these things for the um, school, the projects and etc. Um, 
I have written several articles and I have um, digged into topics such as sexual education in Poland and I have uh, published a little article about it. Um, also, I have created this think tank description of the event and the idea. And um, unfortunately, during my stay, I was not able to make it come true, but I really hope because it's, it's such a great idea um, and um, such a great tool to connect with local community. I really hope that somebody will use those descriptions and um, will make a good use of it. And I also have written how to toolkit, like how to um, go to a class and what kind of activities you should conduct and um, how to attract pupils' attention, etc. It was quite interesting for me to work on this because it was purely based on my personal experience and uh, on, on the feedback from the pupils, so it was pretty valuable information for me and I've shared it for the future volunteers. Also, um, I have shared the video also, and not only video, but article, how to go zero waste. And uh, my stay here um, in Poland, I, I, I've learned more about the zero waste and I have like, I don't know, like lots of plants and stuff. I don't know, you can also see on the background. Um, I've learned more about gardening and um, about zero waste. I've connected with local groups who are swapping clothes or um, who are exchanging products so you can exchange the clothes that you're not using for, I don't know, a cup or something. So I've got a lot of, um, I don't know, furniture from there. Um, also very, like a lot of different fruits and vegetables. Um, so it was really interesting to connect with this local community who had similar ideas and similar values. And for me, it was very beneficial as far as for them. Um, so I also have created this article, written this article for the people who are willing to become zero waste and um, will have to know how to segregate the trash and etc. Because in my country we do not segregate the trash and here I've learned that we are we have to segregate it and um, it, it, this is the best thing you can do um, to, to preserve your country or the nature in general. So. I highly advise everyone who is interested in that to read the article. Um, apart from that, I've been living with uh, lots of people and I have created an article about tips, uh, how to share your home. Um, some of them were based on the true life experiences of mine, so it's also a very important article for me because I think I'm gonna use it in the future too. And uh, if you have just moved into a new apartment with different people, especially on, with different background, like cultural backgrounds, um, it's really important to read this article and I also highly recommend it to everyone who is about to experience this whole situation on him or her to read this article and try the best um, to make use of this um, co-tenancy. And um, the last one, I think the article was um, what to do in quarantine, what to do in quarantine. Um, it was my idea about um, how to spend your time in quarantine because we had this lockdown and I think we are about to have another one and you were not really able to leave um, the, the house um, other than for like medicine or food. So um, I had a list of the things you could do to make your life at home less um, miserable, I guess, and more colorful. So if everyone, anyone's at home, um, not knowing what to do with the time, apart from the working, I've written the list of the things that you can do and will take your attention from this overall, overall stress and hysteria that is around the, my house. So. I would also recommend it to people to read it. And yeah, apart from that, I have created some um, um, graphical design works um, for, for my organization, um, like different brochure and um, in case of emergency cards. And I'm about to finish this guidebook for future volunteers. So this was missing in my case. When I came here, I really needed something to um, that would help me to move around or to go to places. I mean, you always have the Google, but it's the best if you have a little 
um, guidebook to tell you what to do, what to Google even. So um, it was very, quite um, intensive work for me. And I really think that, uh, I really hope that this will help other volunteers to find their place in Poland. Um, yeah, so far, this is it, I guess. Um, I am not going to go in depth uh, in the um, local activities that I've been participating in, but uh, the most uh, memorable ones for me were um, this woman strike um, where we had to go during the quarantine and we had like women and men also there supporting women's rights and um, I had to go there and like hold the microphone and talk about my experience and um, I love the feedback that I got uh, from there and um, I got pretty a lot of acquaintances from that uh, day. Also uh, we had this one billion rising when we had to dance to support people as well as for the volunteers day when we had to present our organization. It was pretty chilly but we managed to do it and one of the memorable things that also is a ball for seniors. Um, we had to prepare this place um, for the seniors and uh, we had to be with them, accompany them and um, I got really nice connections with, uh, with them too so it was pretty fun for me. Um, so yeah, I think this whole volunteering thing depends on how people make a use of it and um, well, well, my advice to new volunteers would be don't be afraid to try out new things and um, I don't know, be a bit um, creative, I guess, and have your mind open to new, new experiences and new ideas and um, to share things with others because sometimes you might have a good idea and others also might have it. So when you exchange it, you will become richer and the other person also becomes richer. So I guess that would be it for my side. If anyone has any questions, comments, feedback, or wants to approach me for additional advices whatsoever, you can always contact me and uh, you'll have my email and phone. So always feel free to address me. Thank you again and goodbye.